Hey everybody, today is another day of just a bit of random work we're doing on the farm. We're still waiting for that grain to show up, so we're not doing any sowing this weekend. Have you spoken to those people yet? Nah, I'm gonna So hopefully we'll find out today when that grain's meant to show up anyway. So we're currently gonna go feed the sheep and just go check them. And um, yeah, there's a bit of other stuff that I think we're gonna carve a bit more wood. And um, we'll see what else happens, but we'll go check their sheep and give them a feed first. And then we'll continue on with uh, a bit of other stuff during the day. All right, we're just out here at the first paddock with the sheep. Once this is the lambs and the weathers. Yeah, lambs and weathers in here. Um, if you've been following on the channel, this is the one we were out the other week. We dropped some hay off, and I was yabbering on about the feeder bin. Um, we're just out here at the moment. We're just checking it, so we'll have a look at it. Good morning, viewers. Cam wanted me to explain what we actually do when we go around the sheep. We're just here at the bin. We're checking to see how much rain they're actually going through. They're chewing through it pretty well by the look of it, so we might actually come out today with another couple of bucket loads of grain and put in here uh, while we've got time up our sleeve. And then we'll just drive, drive around. You'll see the sheep in the distance over there. You may not see them, they're pretty far away. <laughs> well, there's a few white spots over there. We'll go and have a look basically to make sure they're all upright and there's no uh, no sheep got cut what they call cast because these paddocks have still got raised beds in them they can get on their side or maybe on their back and they won't be able to get up so it's just basically go around them check them make sure that they see whether we need to feed them a bale of hay again or not uh, if we do we'll come out later and do that and then we'll go into the next paddock We'll drop a bit of grain on the ground for those ewes and uh, check another little mob where the fat lamb ram is and then yeah we'll go about our business so that's what we're up to this morning all right so we're just sort of getting a bit closer to the mob they're all sort of spread out everywhere so i'm just gonna have a look over them um people who like are involved with livestock and sheep will know that you're checking sheep like most every day that people that don't have quite so much experience with it, you may not realise that they got a, they're not as how would you describe it? Not as low maintenance. Yeah, they're not as low maintenance as what you may think. You actually got to be out here mostly every day checking them. Mum's out here every day during the week checking the cows and the sheep. She checks them like almost twice. She? Uh, she checks them twice a day. Um, Dad does it on the weekends just because he knows a bit more what he's looking for with the sheep. Not so much the cattle. So we'll just drive around and um, just check that they all look alright. Uh, yeah, so. How did them say? No, not really. They're all in good condition. They're all standing upright. Um, yeah, everything seems to be under control. So we'll go into the next paddock and check them and give them a bit of feed.
I just having a look at the sand they got, and they're not too bad. And Nick might have to bring these fellas to bale of hay. That's the excuse the wind. Uh, I haven't got my microphone thing on today. We just finished feeding these ewes here. Um, so this is that second mob we just come across into the other paddock. Um, just get Dad to say about what's happened to the bees. We haven't really spoken much about like breeding and what the sort of plans are um, for this year. So I'll get Dad to just quickly say what's actually happening with them. Yeah, viewers. These ones we've just fed there, the ewes. And we're joining them up to the Dooney Rams so uh, to keep our breeding program going to build up more numbers um, so we can uh, get a bit more wool happening. So we've got three rams out with this lot and uh, they've probably been out now for about four weeks. So probably the middle of next month we might end up taking them out along with our little fat lamb ram over with the other little mob we've got. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just keep, hopefully we'll get some green pig happening and they'll keep growing and going the way they are. They're not too bad at the moment. So, um, and those, the fat lamb, they're, they're the white suffolk crosses, aren't they? Yes, so we've got about 40 ewes we pulled out of this mob um, this year to put with our white Suffolk ram. So uh, in theory, last year he produced quite a few twins and if we had 40 fat lambs, well that's good, but in the way he produced last year we should end up with a few more than that. Um, as long as they all survive and the foxes don't get them and whatever and whatever so um, yeah we'll keep you in touch with what happens as far as all that sort of stuff goes down the track and what's happening with the white suffolk lambs oh the white suffolk lambs that are over in that first paddock we looked at uh the stock agent will come down in another about in june sometime and she'll have a look at them and if she reckons they're going not too bad, well, we might bung them in the market before a lot of other lambs come down off the irrigation. Um, because when they do, naturally they've got better feed and in better condition and they'll uh, might make ours not sell quite as good. So they, they're looking all right at the moment if we can keep the feed into them and um, so forth. So. In another couple of months, we'll let you keep you posted on how they're going too and what happens to them.
All right, so we'll go check this last mob with the um, the white Southern crosses in them, and then that'll be all the um, checking done anyway. And then, as Dad said, we might come out with a load of grain and fill up that feeder bin in that other paddock, and maybe some hay as well. Uh, we'll see how we go there. All right, we're just down in the last paddock now, out the back, just checking the white Southern crosses. Uh, there's only a small mob of them up in front of us. Just back up at the shed now. Um, Dad just got off the phone before with the bloke. We're buying the seed for the triticale off and it's ready to pick up. So we'll have that picked up during the week and we'll be able to hopefully start sowing next weekend if we don't get too much rain. It's meant to rain during the week as well. And um, yeah, that'll be good. So we've just brought the feed cart back up to the shed. And we're going to straighten out this jockey wheel for whatever reason. It's all cockeye. So we're gonna strain that out and we'll get the John Deere and we'll put the bale carrier on the back and we'll put the two grab fork, uh, pincher fork things, whatever they're called on it, so we can roll. What? I said bale carrier. I couldn't think of the name of the bloody fork things though. Yeah, we're gonna grab the John Deere, put the bale carrier on, put the fork um, things on the bow carrier. We'll take the front end loader forks off and put the bucket on and then get some grain, fill up the feeder bin like we were saying before and we'll also feed out some hay as well. So we'll strain this jockey wheel out first and then we'll sort all the other stuff out too. Right here, it's looking a bit straighter. There you go. Well, what I might do, my mother bent that up when she was feeding the sheep. So I might get try and find a bit of stuff to stick in there and weld on that. Make it a bit stronger. Just in case mother goes out again. Anyway, it'll be right. All right, Dad just finished welding up the uh, bracket there for the jockey wheel and he added a bit of a metal, as he was saying before, so that it doesn't bend if someone hits it. 
There we go, viewers. Mother proof. We just put this bail carry on, we put the prongs on. Um, we had to dick around with the hydraulic, one of the hoses, and replace and fitting on the end. And um, yeah, it was built up with pressure for whatever reason. So we replaced that end and it should be all right now. So that's gonna jump in the tractor, I think. And then we'll take the forks off the front, put the bucket on, and we'll fill the bucket up with some grain out of the field bin. And then we'll go take some hay and some grain out to the shed.
Righty, I just finished up feeding the sheep. As you saw, we filled up that grain feeder and we fed out a bale of hay to the um, the uh, Dooney ewes. Um, yeah, so they're all fed now. Um, we were talking about it in the ute before me and Dad about the White Suffolk crosses. We weren't going to feed them because there's only such a low amount of sheep to large amount of acres. They don't need anything to be fed to them. They've got enough greenery for them to chew on. So Dad's going to think chaff and the chainsaw blade up, or the chain on the chainsaw, and then I think we're going to cut a few more. Might be going to cut down another dead tree, but I know we're going to cut up a couple of big branches that fell down and uh, maybe get a little bit more firewood going. All right, so Dad finished chain, uh, sharpening the chainsaw. We've just come out to a uh, dead branch that fell down last year. Uh, it's actually the branch that we came and lifted out of the tree with the John Deere the first day we got it. Um, if you've been following from the channel, you might remember that. Um, if you're interested, I'll put a card up and you can go have a squiz at that. But <clears throat> anyway, we're going to get the chance around and cut this wood up. We'll uh, yeah, clean this bit of a branch up and maybe do a little bit more after.
righty -o. Dad's just uh, driving off there on the tractor. Just dumped the bucket load of wood here that we just cut up. There's some wood from the other day. Uh, well, the other week, last week I think it was. We cut up and split. That's all pretty much dry now. And uh, it looks like it's going to be some pretty good firewood there. So all this stuff that we cut up, well, Dad's going to stack up, I don't know, maybe tomorrow. Um, there was two really big parts of the trunk, oh, not the trunk, of that branch that fell down and the one that Dad cut down. Um, they were going to be too big to, well, it would have been too much wood to fit in the bucket, put it that way. So I think Dad's going to go pick them up tomorrow with the front end load and just bring them over here and he'll probably slice them up um, when he needs a bit more wood. So, yeah, still plenty more wood to cut. There's still, I think, well, still those couple of branches out there. There's a dead tree over in an old plantation that wants to cut over, uh, chop down. And there's another branch where we used to have an old hay shed that's also fallen over or fallen off a tree and uh, Dad wants to cut that up too. So yeah, but that's pretty much it for the day. Just another day of a um, bit of random work. Hopefully with any luck we'll be sowing the triticale next week. So it'll be good to start doing that. Hopefully that we don't get too much rain this week, just enough to keep the ground a bit of moisture in it and uh, give the seed a good start. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can start doing that. It'd be really, really nice to be able to start doing that. I was sort of hoping to be doing it this weekend or the weekend before this weekend, but uh didn't pan out that way, but is what it is. <clears throat> anyway, so we'll, uh, as usual, thanks all for watching. See you in the next one.